Oh, I'm famished. After doing the nasty, I need to have some beans. This is insane, you guys. Yo, this is sexy, man. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the internet, it's Tuesday night, and this is the Panels on Pages.com podcast with your host, Lee Rodriguez. At the end of the day, babies are terrible people, and I'm not sorry for saying it. Jason Nyes. Motherfucker, I won best costume. Jose Guzman. Yeah, I know nothing about Firestorm, except for his hat's always burning. And Kelly Harris. Boy, love, it appears we got a penis in the mail. (laughs) I glued my fucking eyes shut! (laughs) I just want to see all these Yelp reviews of Jose's jizz. (laughs) Oh, sorry, I knocked you over the salt. Like you had anything better to do. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's been to look a lot like Christmas out there. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, December 5th, 2017, and this is episode number 400, and I'm going to say three. Nailed it. Of the panels on page.com podcast. I'm your host, the Lord Reverend Lee Rodriguez, and joining me tonight, we got Mr. Jason Nyes. Hush, tiny demon. <laughs> and Kelly Harris. Nobody cares, Juan. <laughs> it's true, Juan. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. The speakers by his absence, there's our good friend Jose Guzman taking care of some personal business. Um, he may or may not join us later on. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Hopefully he gets to get in there. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, you know. Apologies for uh, missing last week, but you know, it was happening. Had had some had dealing with some some head lice at the house. That was Oof, fun. Whoa! Pretty... How did that shake out? You know what? It wasn't that bad. It, it could have been a lot worse. Um, uh, we had a lice outbreak in the house uh, about a year, almost a year to the day ago, with uh, Jax and Zoe had it. Just fucking riddled with it and even like Nicole my wife Nicole ended up getting it too like it was rough like it was pretty rough um I have remained utterly unscathed this entire time somehow yeah good thing you had your vasectomy (laughs) and they had to shave your balls so we ended up uh uh like last year we ended up having to uh like just shave Jax's head I got so fucking tired of because he was going to uh, a daycare at the time and like they were like just just breaking balls like unnecessarily because like you know you do all the stuff you do the fucking you know the shampoos and everything it kills all the stuff you know it's not like it's, it's all gone you know but if they found so much as even one you know obviously dead little egg they're like no no he has to go home that was so the, s- the third day of that I'm like fuck it we'll just <laughs> shave his head <laughs> no, now bitches Let's see what happens this was the same daycare that labeled him a menace to society that's the one yeah. <laughs> Look, all the people, but we able to take care of it pretty uh pretty easily this time. Like, uh, got a good wash in. Uh, it was it was nowhere near the uh, the ordeal as we had before. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't too bad. Your your lice but, you know. pros now. What's that? Your lice pros now. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. You know, we probably had this conversation the last time this happened, but lice and crabs are the same thing, right? That's just yes. different names? Okay. I think they may be like a slightly different critter. Okay. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like crabs are pubic lice. Well, yeah, but like why? I would think they'd just be different. Right? They'd be the same thing, just they find different homes. Oh, they're a little bit different to the point to where I remember I read a thing not long ago that said that the pubic louse is well on its way to becoming extinct. Oh, because, shit. you know. People shave their bushes these days. Ah, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I yeah, know the, I the, do. The, Up top. The, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the crabs' is, uh, natural habitat is getting wiped out. So, you know, there's, that deforestation is a motherfucker. <laughs> getting them real good. But yeah, not too bad. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, let's see what else. Uh, we did a damn... What the fuck? We did, we did, we did Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was all right. Wouldn't do bad, uh, you know. It's fine. It's been pretty, pretty chill. Got some shopping done. Uh, fucked up my back. That was cool. 
Uh, didn't really appreciate that. But I'm on the mend. Got chiropractored up. It's been all right. It's been, been okay. But Saturday, went out and had myself a man day with my hetero life mate, Goat. Had a big day. Uh, Goat, who has to... some controversial opinions about eggnog these days. Yeah, he, he's the on. He's on the. T- he's on the bad team. <laughs> he's on the wrong side of history on this one. I feel like uh, people at times gonna look back and not be kind to, to Goat and his ilk, vis a vis the Nog Wars of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> but we went out um, to the fairgrounds. So there's, a, there's always a, a flea market. Once a month up at the Nashville Fairgrounds. It's pretty fucking big. And so we went into what we thought was supposed to be like, you know, like toy day at the flea market. Turned out to be a much smaller scale, like comic and toy show that happened to be happening at the same time in a different building at the fairgrounds. So no big deal. But it being kind of a small place. It's where, it's where the last time I was in that building. Um, I pledged allegiance to Rebel's ass. <laughs> <laughs> the time before that in that building, I almost got my fucking arm broken in a jiu-jitsu tournament. And so I'm, I've got something of a storied history in this building so far. Um, but, you know, it wasn't super big. You know, kind of got in and out in about an hour or so. But the big takeaway was I fucking came out just loaded up with Marvel Legends figures. Uh, I got all kinds of spider peoples. I got myself a Miles Morales. I got Mayday Spider Girl. I got me a Spider Gwen. Um, for ten bucks each. Solid, solid, nice. solid. Get in boxes. Yeah. yeah. What oh, you mean? in the packages too. Should in I... the packages, brand new. Ten bucks in the boxes. And it was it was kind of fucking nuts. The guy had uh, a big kind of display up of lots of stuff from that Spider Man wave, from like that Captain America wave around the same time, uh, like so, like the Secret War Cap, um, maybe even some of the Guardians Two wave. Or in there, uh, like a Star Lord. They even had, had an Angela in there too for like ten bucks, and it was just so fucking refreshing. That guy came to do some business. You know what I'm saying? Like he came to sell some shit. And like you know, until I go, but man, if, they, if I could find that like a Spider-Man 2099, perfectly that white suit, I'd have like got him the whole family. And you know, two tables down, a guy had a bunch of the same figures and a Spider-Man 29 with a forty dollar price tag. On. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like. No, man. No. <laughs> also, I'm not going to buy your $35 Gwen. I got it, Gwen, for 10 bucks from that guy down there. You know? What the fuck? Man, that's kind of nuts. That Gwen figure was hard to find for a while. It still is. I looked on eBay for the fuck of it. It's still like 35 bucks. Like the guy, It's crazy. Just, the, the guy just like, fuck it. I want to sell a lot of these today, so I'm going to make them 10 bucks. So, I mean, good for that guy. Um, ended up going to get. Uh, we were at Toys R Us, doing some Christmas shopping, and they had. Have you guys seen the Legends figures? That are on the old school uh, cards. No, oh. I've heard about them. I haven't seen them though. Um, they look amazing <laughs> on the card. Like they look fucking incredible. Um, like the old reissued... school. Uh, What's that? Toy, like the old school toy biz cards. Yes. Oh, yes. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're super nice. Like the the bubble is. In between two, like the, the cards are thick, big, thick, you know, thicker than Liam Neeson's cock. There's big, thick cards. You got <laughs> the the bubbles between two layers. I mean, they 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 can clearly be meant as just display pieces on their own. Um, so I promptly opened the Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all these Spider people I got didn't quite scale with the old uh, like Spider Man classics, like old like I think my last Spider Man bought was like a two thousand one or some shit. So yes, I bought you know my. Spider Man at regular price, but still end up about twelve fifty a piece if you average it all out. And that's you know not not that's the last Spider Man I'll ever have to buy. But you know, I kinda got lucky the past six months or so because I think, you know, when we were when they've kind of relaunched the Legends line, all of us were gonna talk about how like we'll never fucking pay twenty bucks on the reg for a Legends figure. No, you can't. They look great. Uh, the packaging is great. Everything looks great about them, except for that twenty dollar price tag. Yeah. But we even said then that hey, they start hitting clearances or TJ Maxx is, we'll be all over it. <laughs> they right. Like, I've been, I've been scoring some good shit for the past six months or so. They had, uh, like, our local Walmart put a whole bunch of the Avengers waves on clearance. Like, I got I got Scarlet Witch, the Captain Marvel, and Hawkeye, I think, for, like, $3 a piece uh, a few months back. You know, so I've gotten several of the new Legends in the past year or so, but just, you know, I'm not at full price, not the newest ones or whatever, which that's fine. If I can keep doing that, great, whatever, you know. But I had to make room for all my new spider people, and so I 
uh, took my legend shelves and I like took down a bunch of the duplicate characters. I like you know three different Iron Mans and some different Captain Americas. So kind of you know streamlined and consolidated a little bit and kind of for the first time since I've kind of had the new ones, kind of really started comparing the two together. And it's like I don't know when it happened, but at some point, like they lost the toe joints. Remember, like every fucking Legends figure had a toe joint yeah. for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Like they all had the toe joints, and like the they have the ab crunch now. But you also sometimes could like turn them at the sternum too. And you, they they don't do that because like I was, um, uh, I noticed it especially on the Spider People because like I feel like a Spider Man figure needs to have a toe joint, and it needs to have as much articulation as possible, as humanly possible. Yes. The, the Spider Man has a really like a, like a like a pec joint. So you can kind of throw the shoulders back or forward, right? Which is kind of nice. I dig that, but none of the other ones do. And like I said, none of them have the toes. And like I have a fucking Black Panther figure with a toe joint. I think the fucking Professor X figure has a toe <laughs> joint in case he needs to reach something off the top shelf. Just he can, in case, from he his can chair. Toe. <laughs> hey, just because he can't walk doesn't mean he doesn't have toes. Yeah, like so many of those old figures have the toe joints, and I thought like. I was about to rage on, oh, these fucking new $20 Legends don't have toe joints. But I look back and, like, they haven't for a while, I guess. Yeah. So probably since the move over to Hasbro. I think so, yeah. Because, like, uh, like the old, vi- the, the not the newest vision, but the one before that doesn't have it. Like, I've got a fucking Beast figure with no toe joint. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's Beast good. is another one that everything should be articulated on that. Yeah. 1,000% yes. It's kind of nuts. You know, they keep fucking... Creep up them price tags, but turn down the the, the parts. Some dirty pool has, bro. I don't like it. But you know, I do like that they have extra hands and shit because the uh, Captain America that I got the other day has a, a couple different hands, and one of them is like just he's flat out just doing the big like you know Uncle Sam, I want you point. <laughs> which is kind of awesome. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, you can go up there. I might try to see if I can put some gold ones on eBay, see what happens. I don't know. I got like a fucking, I, I, I got a gallon size Ziploc bag just full of old legends now. So I don't know. Might recycle them in the new shit. Who knows? Let's see what happens. But last thing I want to talk about oh. as it pertains to my week and oh. Saturday in particular. The suspense is, is killing I want, I want me. To talk about lunch, guys. I, I want to talk about lunch for a minute. Okay. Because. Love a good lunch. Holy shit. So, Goat and I, out on a, you know, manly venture, said, hey, let's go to a place where the girls don't want to eat. And so, we ended up at the, the Caney Fork in Nashville. And at the Caney Fork, they, uh, they, it's a, you know, white trash decorum <laughs> extraordinaire. It's like right next to the Gaylord Opera Inn Hotel. Um, actually, directly next door to Cooter's Place. As in Cooter from the Dukes of Hazard has a restaurant. <laughs> uh, you get Cooter's place, you get free admission to the Dukes of Hazard Museum. In case you're wondering, but I, they, they that's had, nuts because I'd be w- I'd willing to pay double for a Dukes of Hazard Museum. You get it? It's, it's gratis, <laughs> totally, totally included. <laughs> like, but we saw it a while back. I'm captivated by the fact that, like, you know, the sign had you know, you know, like what, yeah, musings of. Uh, alligator and buffalo and shit like that. Like, ah, but we had, like, just eaten, so we didn't go back. So now years later, we're fucking closing the circle and went to the Caney Fork. And among all the delicious wildlife on the fucking uh, menu, Goat and I both got the wild game platter. Let me tell you what comes in the wild game platter, everybody. You got yourself some elk patties. And they came out probably around the size of, like, uh, uh, maybe... Maybe maybe three or four inch, a couple little patties of uh, uh, elk meat. Looks kind of um, like a, a breakfast sausage patty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, about like that. Yeah, yeah, just seasoned to fucking absolute perfection. Uh, the best goddamn frog legs I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, wild game sausage, which I'm guessing probably means like 80% rabbit, which is great. <laughs> it's all about that. 10% possum. Maybe maybe some fucking squirrel off in there just for good measure. Like wild game, it's a food description that is just vague enough that I'm like, yeah, yeah, give me some of that. <laughs> give me some of that, please. Uh, some of this tasty stew they have like venison off in the stew, and just a shit ton of Cajun 
Gator Tail Bites. You guys, it was so fucking good. <laughs> it was so, and I had fried corn on the cob as a side dish. It what? Was, yeah. Yeah, it was fucking incredible. Like, they dropped, like, uh, Goat and I get into more adventures where people are concerned about our food than anybody that I've ever met before. Yeah, like, like you know, <laughs> back the fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> it's because it's, it's uh, okay, except present company is scooted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, one in the afternoon, and we're like, two wild game platters, please. And like, and he's like, you know, the small and the big one. We're both like, the big ones. And the guy's face changes. He's like, oh, y'all boys ain't playing around. You're like, no, sir. <laughs> he brings all your meats, please. Uh, and like, and it got there, and they, they put this, this just cartoonishly giant bowl of food in front of us. And Groot and I kind of locked eyes. I'm like, look. And we both kind of said to each other, I'm not the kind of motherfucker that takes pictures of his food. But I'm taking a picture of this. <laughs> this, this shit is Sometimes incredible. you just gotta do it. Sometimes you got to. I'm, and this was a photo worthy meal if ever I saw one. I'm, I'm looking at your uh, Instagram photo of your uh, wild game oh, so meal good. right now. So so take me through this from wild game platter. Take me to the through this from left to right. On the left, it okay, looks okay, like okay. some. So the bit on the left, that's gonna be uh, on your wild game sausage, right? Okay, that's and hidden underneath all kinds of peppers and onions and bullshit. Yeah, like sauteed peppers and some caramelized onions and shit like that. Okay. And then uh, that's one of the two uh, elk patties in the front there. There's two more. There's two one more behind the bowl of uh, outfitter stew. And your stew is uh, it's got some. It's got prime rib. And venison, and again, more wild game off in there, which again, probably possum and rabbit meats. <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> and then off to the right is your giant pile of frog legs and gator tail. Uh, gator bites. And I can, so now that I'm looking at it full screen, I can see the shape of the frog legs. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wasn't really sure good. where the frog legs were in this uh, composition here, but now I see it. Now I see. The little Kermit elbow there. Yeah, you can see right, right in the lower right hand corner. That's like just taint. That's all frog taint right there. <laughs> right in the lower right of the stuff. It's funny that you bring this up. I was watching SmackDown tonight, and they've got a a, a, a female wrestler that they just brought over from NXT named Sarah Logan, and uh, she's got two other chicks with her. And she was talking shit to one of the other female wrestlers, and she was like, "I bet you ain't even eaten wild game before." Because <laughs> her whole her whole bit is she's a she's a hick from Kentucky, she's like an outdoors woman. They're still doing that kind of gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Kelly knows what I'm talking about. I know what's up. Actually, I don't watch SmackDown. I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know this person exists. That's about it. Yeah, she was in the May Young Classic. I gotta wait for her to pop up on a pay per view, and then I'll see her. Sure, sure, because you have to watch those pay per views by contract. I don't have to. It, it's gotten to it's gotten to the point where it's start I'm starting to feel broken. Like I don't think I can do it. Yes. <laughs> oh god, I should do a whole review like that. What woken Kelly Harris. <laughs> <laughs> now that that would be something. <laughs> It would yeah, be no, I, wonderful. I really, I really think Survivor Series just just beat me down. <laughs> we'll see. I got a I got another week before Clash of the Champions. Sure. So so, so what's your final review of your wild game platter, Lee? Oh god, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. Yeah, they've got a uh, the the elk patty was was damn good though, and apparently they have uh, I missed it the first time on the menu, but they've got a double burger. Where one of the patties is bison, the other one is that elk. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, yeah. you guys know I love uh, watching The Office, and it reminds me of this one Office bit where uh, Dwight is throwing a garden party at Fruit Farms, and uh, Robert California is interested in possibly hosting an event there, and Dwight is going over the different packages. There's the uh, gold package, which has the least amount of goats. The silver package, <laughs> which has, you know, a medium amount of goats. And then the goat package. Oh, man. And then Robert California's like, what? why do I want any goats? What? What? What is with your obsession with goats? Dwight leans in and goes, 
I can get you exotic meats, lion steaks. <laughs> right. And then Robert California's like, okay, we'll talk. Robert California walks off. Dwight looks at the camera. He goes, it's just goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hippo steaks. It was hippo steaks. You know, people hated on uh, Robert California. I liked Robert California. He, he is I a, did too. He is a fever dream uh, season of The Office. And it it's, it's definitely... It fits in with the whole pantheon, I feel. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Rod, the Robert California stuff is definitely better than just the Andy stuff. Hello? Nope. Lost me. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you still there? Yeah. Okay, good. I just don't remember the Andy stuff well enough to comment on. Well, it, you know, it was just when, when Andy was manager and he didn't I have... Don't think, you know what? I don't think we ever actually finished watching... Those seasons. Now yeah, that you it, was, it. it was. It was the second to last season was Andy was manager with Robert California as CEO, and then the final season was Andy was the manager. I'm, we may not have finished that. Now that I think about it, I'm the trying to remember the best part. I of, never really. Now that I think about it, I never really liked Andy as manager. No, it, he's not great. And the best part of season nine is when he goes on his boat trip for like nine episodes. <laughs> And they set up a I fucking that part. They set up a fucking foosball table in his office. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. What's got going on, nice? Well, uh, we went to Cincinnati for Thanksgiving. We had a, I believe, a six a.m. flight. Now, was this your first real uh, time, like hanging out with the in-laws, really? Of any no, kind of no, 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 no. I've, okay. I've visited there, you know, uh, right after me and Mary started dating. I went up there and and hung out. But the first time since you've been married, right? I I'm, I'm not sure. I can't get the timeline right. Either we went up there the January before we got married or the January after. So, okay. but it's been a while. It's been 5 years since we've been up to Cincinnati. Oh, okay. You know, her her dad and stepmom come down to Florida all the time, so we've seen them a bunch, but we haven't seen her mom, her sister, her nephew, uh, you know, that side of the family for a while. So, it was it was definitely needed. Uh, got to the airport so fucking early that TSA wasn't even open. Holy shit. And McDonald's was only serving hash browns and drinks. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we're, you know, we're thinking that there's going to be lines out the door and TSA isn't even fucking open yet. Didn't How even. How that work? You had to just wait? Just to had to get wait. In the... Just, yeah, just had to fucking wait until they opened. Wow. Yeah, and it sucked, you know, because we got there about 3.30 in the morning, maybe 4 o'clock. Oh, God damn. For a, for a 6 a.m. flight. And you got to think for people that have like a 5 a.m. flight, you know, that's cutting things a little tight if security doesn't open until quarter to 5 or whatever. Or quarter to 4. Um, so I, was, just, I can't decide what I hate more. Like... Doing that bullshit where you get to the airport like ungodly early, and you know, you're there's a, a mob of people, so you end up having to wait in line, all that bullshit. Or when you get there ungodly early and just breeze through, skate through. through. <laughs> like, I could fucking stay at home or slept later for this shit. Yeah, I'd much rather just get there early and skate through than risk it. Yeah, because then you you just sit there and read a book or something. Yeah, do something. Yeah. Watch CNN with no sound. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can make up the news as it goes along. As you do, you know they got plenty. It's much of, happier. They got plenty of chirons. You you kind of get what's going on. Uh, but Cincinnati was nice and chilly, not too cold. Uh, beautiful weather. Uh, her dad picked us up, and then we promptly went to his house and took a six-hour nap in the middle of the day. God damn! And then uh, went to mom's house and stayed there for a majority of the time. She's got three cats, which she put in the basement, but just because you put the cats in the basement doesn't mean that the house is now completely devoid of any cat hair, and I'm allergic, so cat I was... Known to linger. Yeah. yeah. I was very sick all all week. I was... I, was, I felt terrible. Awful. Uh, it could have been just because of the cats. It could have been, you know, it's that time of year. Everybody's getting sick. I've been traveling a lot and flying a lot, so who knows? 
shit probably just caught up with me, but I, I felt awful. So I spent a lot of the Thanksgiving trip either uh, passed out on the couch or passed out in her mom's bed, Aww. which is fine because a lot of our Thanksgiving trip, besides the actual like Thanksgiving day and, and Thanksgiving lunch and visiting with her family and stuff, a lot of it was uh, her mom would be in the kitchen watching TV, her sister would be upstairs in her room playing on her Xbox, Mary would be on the couch to my left playing on her Nintendo Switch, and then I'd just be there like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Might as well go to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, my wife's over here ignoring me on the couch to my left. We could have done this at fucking home. <laughs> uh, we did end up. I watched uh, White Christmas for the first time. Uh, uh, her mom brought it out, and it's it's White Christmas. Which White, that one? White Christmas. Bing Crosby, Danny Kay. The oh, hap- never. Fuck the, no. The, no. I never want to see that. The hap hap happiest <laughs> Christmas since Bing Crosby tap dance with Danny fucking K. That that sound familiar? Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about now, but yeah, that is like that's definitely in that 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 category of old ass bullshit I'll never watch. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So the movie's called White Christmas. I don't know if you've seen the the box art for but the movie, the motherfucker alive, or the or the poster. But like the poster for the movie is the the two couples. All in, like, their red and white Santa Claus gear, like, chilling in a sleigh, and everything's covered in snow around them. You, you've seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, the, that, that's the image that White Christmas wants to advertise to you. But you know what? That's the fucking last scene in the movie. <laughs> there isn't a goddamn flake of snow until the last three minutes of White Christmas, goddammit. Really? I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, I ain't seen a goddamn Rudolph yet. There was a, it, it was like a military propaganda movie for the most part. They get to this ski oh, lodge what, because he's a soldier or something. Yeah, there's there's some story about they were soldiers and they get out of the army and now they're entertainers and then they go to this ski lodge with these two chicks who are trying to trying to fucking grift them and they realize their general owns the ski lodge and there's no business at the ski lodge so their plan is to put on this big show on Christmas Eve to get business back at the ski lodge. Oh, God, that sounds super boring. And the entire time, I'm just waiting for Hans Gruber to kick down the door <laughs> and take the whole place hostage. So that was fun. It was fun live-tweeting White Christmas while Mary and her mother were sitting to my left, and every so often, Mary would read one of my tweets and chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, me and Mary were uh, Facebook messaging back and forth to each other, uh to communicate uh, covertly with her mother in the room sometimes. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> you know, because it's been five years. Uh, that That's a lot of uh, passive aggression from your mother that you haven't gotten in person for a while. So You don't say. So, so mom, <laughs> mom had to do some work in a short amount of time. It was pretty funny. Uh, had so much damn food at Christmas, the uh, table broke in half. <laughs> Oh jeez! She had like a, with all the food on it. She had like ten crock pots across two tables, keeping everything Holy warm. Shit. And one of the tables was a glass kitchen table. And I don't know if it was just too old. It got too hot. It was too heavy. Shit oh, snapped. Shit. shit snapped right in half. Uh, got our Cincinnati chili and got some That's Penn awesome. Station. And uh, really was. You know, even though I was sick and I was bored for a lot of it, it was a nice time. Nice to see her family. Good to hang out with our nephew, who is uh, super fucking smart and is into battle bots and Legos. And uh, nice. him, him and Mary were playing Super Mario Odyssey for a good majority of the weekend, so that was cool. How old? Uh, how old is he? He is seven. So oh, right last on. time we were up there. He was two? That's not right. That can't be right. He was fucking two? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's, he's uh, you know, as the text comes across the screen on Mario Odyssey, he's reading it all, no problems. Yeah. yeah he's fucking doing math like crazy. It's nuts, man. I have no idea about the progression of the... Um, you know how a how a child learns. I don't I don't know where a kid is supposed to be at a certain time in their life. So, blows me away. Well, I'm you know pretty sure we're gonna send Jax to fucking 
daycare and pull ups. I mean, middle school and pull ups. So, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm sure he'll do fine. <laughs> no, Look, no just because will... you don't want to go potty like a big boy doesn't mean you're not smart. No, oh no, no, that's the thing. Cause he can. He's a shoes not to. He's a prick like that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, this past Friday, the Mahoney's were in town uh, doing Disney with the whole fam. And the plan was we were, me and Mary, were going to do the Mickey's Merry Christmas Party at Magic Kingdom Friday night. Uh, spend the night at the uh, Art of Animation Hotel and hang out with them the next morning before they flew out. But both Mahoney kids got uh, projectile vomit sick. Ooh. So they Whoa. had to uh, uh, take a take a rain check on the Christmas party. So me and Mary went instead. And without, you know, the plan was we were just going to follow the Mahoney's and, and go wherever, you know, Katie wanted to go. And without them, we we hadn't made a plan. We hadn't made a fucking strategy, so things were kind of willy nilly, and and uh, it was a it was a little stressful. That five hours, it's from seven to midnight. Five hours at Magic Kingdom, that shit goes quick. Yeah, it does. Like you you look at your watch, and then you look at it again moments later, and it's a half hour. It's, <laughs> it's been a half hour, so. Uh, I don't it, know shit about Disney. Were you at? Did you go to Pandora? No, no, no. That's Animal Kingdom. I don't. Is that anywhere near it? Uh, I mean, they're all on the same in the same like vicinity, but there's okay. there's four different main theme parks. There's oh, Magic shit. Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom, and they're all separate it's tickets. Shit, really? Yeah. Someday I really want to go to that Pandora thing purely so I can wander around and go. It's just like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> <laughs> And then when people say, what, what are you talking about? It's from the movie. I go, what movie? <laughs> uh, uh, Lisa actually rode the um, the Pandora, the, the Flight of the Navi ride, where you ride. She got to ride a Taruk? She got to, uh, what, are they called Taruks or well, one of those bat things? What are those called? Yeah. A Banshee. They're, like called Ban- <laughs> <laughs> They're called Banshees. They're called Banshees. She said she rode that ride, and it was pretty fucking awesome. Like, say what you will about those Avatar movies. They're lame, but... You know, it's Disney put this park, put these attractions together, so it's going to be pretty dope, even if the property is lame. Oh, sure. Yeah. But we we got to stay at the Art of Animation Resort, which is one of the value resorts, so it's just a a basic bare-bones hotel, but each building is themed after a certain, you know, Disney animated movie, and we were staying in the Little Mermaid section, and you go outside, and there's these huge fucking four-story tall fiberglass statues of the characters like ursula and ariel and then we walk over to the next building and it's all lion king and you get to stand underneath pride rock with mufasa like when i when i was going to disney as a kid when we were coming here on vacation you know we stayed at the disney resorts but they were never like they they always had a disney theme (coughs) so to speak like Everything you would find Mickey Mouse's everywhere, but it wasn't like overtly Disney. It was it was a hotel theme, but this shit is like you walk out the door and Disney punches you in the fucking gut, <laughs> and it's it's also animation themed. So like the lobby has a bunch of uh, giant blown up versions of like concept art from the movies oh, of the cool. characters that's and shit. Awesome. Like I'm looking at this like I would have lost my fucking mind when I was a kid. If we were staying here, because this it's so up my alley, it was very cool. And then the last thing I want to touch on is I watched two different documentaries this week. I watched the Jim and Andy documentary on Netflix, which is uh, the behind the scenes of Man on the Moon, where Jim oh, sure. Jim Carrey played Andy Kaufman. Ooh, I keep meaning to watch that. Uh, it is a I really loved Man on the Moon, and I was a huge Jim Carrey fan at the time. So this very much speaks to me. And having Jim Carrey essentially speaking directly to the audience, looking straight at the camera, and you see every fucking wrinkle on his face, oh, and you man. look right into his eyes, and like he's still he's not he has not gone off the deep end. He's still got it. Like he's still there. And it's cool to get a perspective on a movie like that from him while he's still with it, you know? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and essentially, he channeled the 
public persona of Andy Kaufman while on set. So, you know, you know the shit where Andy Kaufman fucked with Jerry Lawler and they he did the whole intergender wrestling thing. Oh yeah. yeah that, one of the, like one of the few things I know about him. That was the character Jim Carrey was on set like when they weren't filming. Like he was that t- level of asshole. <laughs> he would come to set as uh uh, Tony Clifton, and just just be the worst. Like he oh, that's, and he that's was a bold choice. He was Andy. He wasn't Jim. Like he wouldn't answer to Jim. He was Andy, straight up. It's a a real interesting watch. If you're into Jim Carrey, I have no choice but to slap the shit of somebody if they did that. To oh me oh fucking he, uh he pressed Lawler's buttons a, a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know who knows how much of this is a work and how much of it was real but he ended up on a stretcher no lie oh lawler or carry jim carry fucking lawler La- lawler took it to him which is funny That's because funny. lawler was like i don't know why he's doing this like the andy i knew was a cool dude like he was chill he was super nice it was only on tv he was this fucking asshole and and we planned all of that like so right, why, right, right. why 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 yeah. is he coming at me like this <laughs> uh uh but highly recommended if you're like a like a 90s jim carrey fan if you liked man on the moon or if you just like behind the scenes documentaries on movies it's uh it's a good watch the other movie i watched was uh, a documentary was too funny to fail on hulu which is the documentary about the Dana Carvey show. Do you guys know about the Dana Carvey show? I don't know about the documentary, but I know a lot about the Dana Carvey okay. show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I never watched it. So, uh, Kelly, you were you were a little young at the time, but Dana Carvey was when he was on Saturday Night Live when he was doing Church Lady and George Bush and Garth from Wayne's World. He was probably the the biggest comedy star in the world at that time. Like, yeah, I got the tail end of He's Dana Carvey, so I yeah. only know about the Master of Disguise. <laughs> oh, I'm turtle, turtle. <laughs> so he left Saturday Night Live to go do his own thing, and he decided to put together this sketch comedy show with Robert Schmeigel, Louis C.K., fucking um, Starburns from Community was one of the writers, and then... Uh, some of the uh, actors were Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert. Yeah, like a nuts cast and crew. That it, they're they're all like huge stars now. Yeah, and it was on ABC at nine thirty p.m. on Tuesday nights after Home Improvement, and the first sketch of the show was <laughs> Dana Carvey as Bill Clinton doing like a State of the Union address. And then he proceeds to open up his shirt, and he has multiple nipples, and he starts to breastfeed babies and puppies and kitties. <laughs> and that's that's what they fucking led with on this show. So, the documentary is essentially, uh, this show was ahead of its time, they pushed the envelope too much, and the shit was canceled before they even aired their eighth episode. Wow. Yeah, that's done. <laughs> and I do believe, I saw it when I was uh, searching for the movie to watch it, I do believe the Dana Carvey show is on Hulu now as well. So Oh, no shit. You can oh, watch man. the documentary and then watch the sketch show. Highly recommended. God, I, remember seeing, I remember watching that show for sure, but... God, I must have been like, fuck, like, like nine? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was such a big Dana Carvey fan when I was a kid. Like, I saw Opportunity Knocks on opening day, which was the same day that the Ninja Turtles movie came out. I saw Opportunity (laughs) Knocks in the morning and then Ninja Turtles at night. Holy shit. (laughs) Fucking party animal day. Wayne's World is, like, you know, a cultural touchstone for me. I watched it every day for an entire summer break on VHS. Every single day. That's how you burn out a tape. Yeah, it, it is. You got a couple, sounds like. <laughs> you know, I said this on Twitter. You know, when I was a kid who my 
uh, comedy touchstones were. Oh, yes, I saw this tweet! <laughs> For whatever reason, as a child, I was a big fan of both George Lopez and Cedric the Entertainer. That's so oh, funny. Really? I don't know why those are the two that I gravitated towards as a child, but I thought that the Cedric the Entertainer show was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found Cedric the Entertainer to almost be offensively not funny. <laughs> like, 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 George is a little bit like Tiger Lee, but like, Cedric is like powerfully unfunny. <laughs> like, I don't have any fond memories of him. It's just, he's there. Like, I remember, remember laughing hysterically at it. I don't know what it was. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> Did you watch the, uh, what was it? Was it the Black Kings of Comedy or just the Kings of Comedy? No, I just watched his show on Fox. Like, the the, the TV show he had. And it, it was, was a, like this. It was, that, he had a TV show? Yeah, it was like yeah a, the it, Cedric the Entertainer show. It was it. Really? A, it was just a sitcom, right? Or was it like a variety show? It was kind of like a variety show. Okay. Because I think I remember him being on a stage. Yeah, but the King's yeah, Comedy also... is pretty great if you skip the Cedric the Entertainer parts. <laughs> yeah, I was also way into the uh, George Lopez show when I was How younger. How do you watch the Cedric Entertain- the Entertainer show and not be like, oh, wait, no. Bernie Mac. <laughs> the Bernie Mac show was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing was, I never really was into that show much. It's I did so watch good. it. <laughs> I did watch it. I Actually, I picked up Bernie Mac later, like, after he was dead. Like, that's when I started to watch it and sit when it was in syndication. And Damn good. I, yeah, that, that show's actually pretty great. It's so fucking strange. Aside from your questionable taste in comedians, uh, Kelly, what's going on? Eh, nothing much. Uh, Thanksgiving really isn't much of a thing by me because it's just me and my parents, so it's pretty much any other day. Nice. Wait, 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 you don't have like a big extended family? No, they're they're either dead or excommunicated. Oh, so lucky. That's the way to do it. <laughs> that is the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? We're kind of there too, really. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> Samesies. Yeah, it's pretty great. But then Mary you know had to go and... We had, we had friends. We had friends, though. <laughs> So. Mar- Mary had to go and fuck it up with her extended family, but luckily they're on <laughs> Ohio and we only have to see them once every five years. There you Fucking go. Mary and her stupid functional family units. Yeah, get out of here. Gross. Uh, but most of my time, Christmas. <laughs> most of my time as of late has been occupied by the uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild on the uh, Switch. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. That is a damn good game. Until earlier this afternoon when I got mad at it. Because <laughs> I, I, I discovered I went way farther in the game than I should have. Like, I, pr- I started progressing farther in the story than I should have, I should say. Because I was not ready for this fucking centaur d- dude that shooting uh, arrows at you and can kill you in one hit when you only have five hearts. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no. That's so I was great. like, oh. I, I need to go, like, make myself strong and then try this again. <laughs> I have a lot of things to do before this. <laughs> yeah, my brother told me that he had put in, like, 70 hours into that fucking game, had not found the edge of the map, and was only, like, you know, 28% through the story or something. I'm like, what the fuck have you been doing for 70 hours? And he goes, just exploring this shit. Killing animals, it's been great. I'm like, all right. Yeah, it's easy to get lost in in that game. Because like I, it's awesome, except for like when you just well, I'm bad at video games. I should say that I'm just bad at video games for the most part. And so like when games get hard, I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I just kind of I just kind of like to progress through games and have fun. That's why I I gravitate towards like Animal Crossing because like that's not a hard game at all. It's just something to do, and I I enjoy it. Right. And like Mario wasn't super hard. There is some skill involved, but it wasn't like I need to learn combos and shit. It's just jumping and joy. But like, (laughs) and Zelda is that for the most part until you get to like a part when you're like, oh man, this guy can kill me in one hit. I can't do what I normally do and just get smacked around a bit until I can hit them. Because let me tell you something, I never block shit. (laughs) That's 
in any video game, like in fighting games. I don't block shit. The only blocks I use are p more punches. So like when when, That's when how you're a man plays. Yeah. So when like you're expected to block things, it's just a, such a foreign concept that I completely reject it and oh, have yeah, to man, like, find ways game around game, it. Like the only way to you know just kill this boss is to like block and deflect his attack back at him or some shit. Yeah. Hate yeah, that. That's shit. very common. Hate that fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Juggalo, so just, Juggalo John in the chat. A different part of the map. Juggalo John in the chat says the mission is just to grab the arrows not fight the guy yeah no i realized that later but for whatever reason where my save point was because it would keep it would kill me and then dump me back on the last save point the game made wherever that save point was it fucked me because where it saved was directly in the moment when the dude caught hit like he i caught his eye so no matter what I did, he would come sprinting at me as soon as the game started again. <laughs> so I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm not even going to bother. I can go back and get those arrows, but now I'd rather kick that dude's ass. So I'm just going to go around and get strong and then come back and wreck house. It's a matter of principle at this point. I respect that. Yeah. yeah I, there is just huge areas of the map that I should have probably gone through that I didn't bother with. Because I was like, I want to finish this story, and then I can explore. And I realize I've I've played this game the wrong way. This isn't <laughs> how that game is built. The hours exploring. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I mean, like I was looking through my friends list on uh, Switch, and the people who I know that have played it, they've all put in like a hundred hours into the game. I don't have that kind of fucking time. <laughs> but see, it's a lot easier. In with something that's a handheld, right? Because you can take it anywhere. Something else, and that's why I like the 3DS so much because I can just play that. And now I can just do that with the Switch because, for the most part, if you're not doing like a big boss thing, there's no reason for you to be watching to be playing Zelda on your TV. It's super easy just to have something on in the background and you're messing around in Zelda at the same time. Hmm. All right. Like Mario, Mario, I wanted to play on the big screen, just because it's so bright and colorful. Because my one complaint about uh, Breath of the Wild is that it's almost, I don't want to say too realistic, but like at times the vision gets foggy because of like it's literally foggy out or it's hard to see where you're going because of how much it's raining and stuff sure. like that. At times, it's better to have the screen closer to you so you can see things better. <laughs> yeah, like, Quick, where, where's my, my my switch windshield wipers? Yeah, <laughs> there was a part on. It was earlier this. It was this weekend. I was playing and I was trying to climb this huge cliff, and it starts raining. And when it rains, you can't climb as well, so you start slipping and shit. Oh God! So I stood on this like there is a little edge in the middle of the cliff that i was able to stand on and i waited for the rain to stop and in game time it rained for hours <laughs> so i just sat there on my phone every now and then i'd look up nope nope still raining <laughs> and then okay it's done raining i can finish climbing up this mountain now the <laughs> wing just turns his head looks at you like hey i'm questing over here son of a bitch <laughs> let's go <laughs> Oh, he knows. He's like, I don't want to be fallen. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> point, good point. It's I do like just the weird things the AI in this game does. Because, like, the other day I got my first horse from saving it. Because just some goblin things were wailing on it for some reason. What an asshole. Yeah. And then it's like, hey, what do you want to name your horse? And I'm like, oh, shit. And I just typed in Martin. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. This seems like a good horse name, I guess. <laughs> I think the horse probably prefers Marty. Yeah, probably. But we were just no getting to know each other. Sure, 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 sure. At first, you want to be formal with the horse, you know. Yeah, Mister Martin, sir. <laughs> That's <laughs> right on, Martin. Oh, Martin, my father's name. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, a I I was wandering through an area. 
And I was probably another area that I should not have been in because I was far under level, um, underpowered. And I just see this giant ogre thing. Like, I'm on top of a cliff and I just see it down below. So I just start throwing bombs at it until it dies. <laughs> I did that for 20 minutes. <laughs> I just threw shit at it until it died because it was a big dummy, so it would just like kind of get up and look around for me, and it couldn't see me, so it would just try and like lay back down and go back to sleep, and I'd throw another bomb at it, and I just kept doing that for like a good twenty minutes, maybe half an hour, and then it died, and I <laughs> I felt like I accomplished something. Maybe I don't need this game. You do. It's a good time. Sounds great, but it sounds like it's like, like I think I have to pick between that and my family. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yesterday I spent a, a while just cooking. <laughs> what, in the uh, game, this reminds yeah. me of Kerouac making Skyrim soup. But it's Skyrim soup time. It really is just Zelda Skyrim. Like that's what it is. But yeah, no, because you, you, the things you cook. They, they help you in different ways. Like, if you cook something with hot peppers, it makes it easier to get around in cold weather. Uh, and I messed certain, it up. Yeah, you get some things like an, an iron shroom. It boosts your defense for a while when you cook with it. You, you put some rock salt and in, in cook it with your uh, your steaks. You it makes a strong steak. Gives you more hearts. All right. So, yeah. I was just experimenting cooking the, the yesterday. And for whatever reason, there's like these guys that show up and they're like, they're a cult that follows Ganon. So they, they want to stop you from doing whatever you're doing. What a and whenever you beat them, they drop rupees and a banana. Always a banana. That just, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something weird about that. They're trying to give you the slip. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, I signed up for Powerbomb.tv the other day, and that is a newer wrestling streaming site, kind of the more niche American indies and some European companies. And so I was watching some two shows from this company called Black Label Pro, and I could not get over the fact that one of the two commentators sounds exactly like Andy Samberg. <laughs> <laughs> like spot on like, every now and then I'd forget what I was watching <laughs> and just start thinking like why is Andy Samberg doing comment oh wait no this is that guy <laughs> like, is this the 99 special episode that's what it felt like it felt like he was like it was a special episode of Brooklyn 99 where he's like undercover it was the weirdest thing and then uh, the main event to the second show was uh, the Faces of Fear, Barbarian and Meng, versus Nick Gage like, and Jimmy Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> he, he, you said you said the name of Black Label something. Or, that sounds like a th place Nick Gage would wrestle. <laughs> yep. And man, that match was one of the crazier matches I've seen this year in terms of dudes just fighting through the entire crowd and wiping out what looked like every chair in the audience. Jesus. Like them just tossing each other through the merch area, and but these are the same like just fucking old ass men. Yeah, oh. yeah, fucking tough as ever too. That makes me sad. It's like, and Nick Gage, like Meng was like fucking hit me in the head with the, that chair again. <laughs> like just still scary as ever. Ming's doing all right. The Rock bought him a truck at one point. He doesn't have to wrestle for a living. They don't normally wrestle. Yeah. Like, they just kind of pop up every now and then for special things. When, when somebody's got that I money. Guess the, yeah, this company really wanted to bring them in. <laughs> Jimmy Lloyd is so funny because, like, in some of those promo pictures, he tries to look all scary and mean. But he's just a, a <laughs> he's just like a fat comic book fan with long hair. And yeah. who, who loves he used shirts, to be a referee for CZW. Who, who loves shirts with jizz all over chick's eyes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Jimmy God. Lloyd was a former child actor. <laughs> he, he looks like it. He looks like <laughs> fucking, uh, uh, fucking Robbie Wrist. 
And then he come down. It wasn't it interest music like the No Mercy theme too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dick Diggity Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Diggity Dog. Co- yeah. He either makes his entrance to that or a Sum Forty One song. Oh my. <laughs> but yeah, and I, Lee, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Every now and then, when I, when I watch Nick Gage, I think to myself, "I'm like, man, Lee's kid's gonna fight that guy someday." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Nick Gage will be filling the faces of the faces of fear roll. Yeah, and your son's going to be the new MDK gang affiliated member. He may be MDK affiliated right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know where he is all day long. <laughs> MDK all fucking day, Jax. Jesus Christ. Fucking maniac. <laughs> so we got any so, mail or anything? The other day, he's at mom's house, and I forget what context, but mom kind of something. She kind of looks around the corner. She goes, what the? And Jack stops and goes, don't say fuck, Grandma Ma. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good boy. She's funny when little kids swear. <laughs> Uh, anything else? No, that's about it. Well, that's about enough, man. That's all it is to fit the fucking print. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think we have any emails this week. Fix that. Email us, popcast at panelsonpage.com or uh, call us, 616-951-1POP. Oh, we'll God play damn we'll it. read them. It'll be a good time. So, you know. me and Mary got new phones yesterday. Uh, oh, what she, you got? She got a Pixel 2 and I got a Moto X4. And But we're both on... Google Fi now, instead of like uh, we had T-Mobile, so we're doing the Google Fi service. So I just went to look at our Google Voice to see if we had any pop voicemails, and it immediately brought me to Project Fi, and it was like, "Hey, what's going on? We're Project Fi now. I don't think I can access the Google voicemails anymore." Oh we got shit! Goddamn Project Fi. Huh. I'll have to figure I it hope out. They bring that here soon because I would like to not be on the team mobile anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't know much about it. Mary's the tech wizard, you know, in our family. So I I just assumed it was everywhere. I guess not. Hey, if Mary says it's good, it's good enough for me. I trust her. Yeah, it's been working out so far. Uh our phones are super fast, you know, the uh voice quality is great. Hell so yeah. no complaints. Okay. Fucking sponsor us, Google Fi. <laughs> That's a great commercial yes. right there. You hear that? <laughs> she got the Daydream headset, so she'll be doing some crazy nice. VR stuff. And she, oh, yeah. my wife, I uh, let me mention this real quick. My wife. My wife. Uh, so she got a job offer, uh, or, or she did a, uh, had a job interview three months ago with this company that uh, was going to be paying her Almost twice what she's getting paid currently. All right. So she was super into it. And at the time, her company wasn't... She wasn't advancing at her company. And she didn't see, you know, a raise in the... uh, A raise of that magnitude in the future. So she was super super excited about this other opportunity. Three months go by. They keep stringing her along, stringing her along, stringing her along. Fucking Tuesday night. Before we leave for Cincinnati on Wednesday for Thanksgiving, she gets a, an offer from this company and oh, says, shit. "says Hey, uh, we need your response by Friday of Thanksgiving oh, week of Thanksgiving what? week." But uh, the money was too good to pass up. She was a little worried, but she accepted it. And then we got back from our Thanksgiving vacation. She had to go into her current job and. Uh, submit her letter of resignation, and she did that. And then she came into work the next day, and her current job's like, "All right, uh, we we want to match it. We want to keep you. So what do we got to do? What do we got to no do to keep you?" Way. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So uh, she just got a huge fucking raise, and is now a team lead at her job, and she doesn't have to leave her current job. Which, well, hell yeah! yeah. That's so, awesome. so I wanna I wanted to put that out there and congratulate my lovely wife. And that uh, a Christmas miracle! Hell, hell yeah. yeah! We about to get motherfucking paid, son. Fucking hey, man! <laughs> I've already got so many plans for her new salary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! You guys, get you a woman 
Get, get you a sugar mama. It's great. A plus. Should you tell him? A fucking, <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> a fucking plus. So, uh, I'm just going to keep telling uh, Mary about different Switch games she should buy. Uh, you should. Uh, don't mention Breath of the Wild because someone might have already gotten that for her. <laughs> Won't say anything. <laughs> she won't listen to this at all. <laughs> Hypothetically. Yeah. So. Just asking for, asking for a friend. Love you, Mary. Congratulations. Yeah. Hell yeah. Congrats, Mary. That's a big deal. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. All right. This is on that note. Let's take a break. On that incredibly fucking positive note. Hell yeah. Take us a break. Oh. We'll be back in a minute. Speaking of, we might have some. We, we very likely have some news next week to talk about. But we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait until we got some signatures. <laughs> pretty excited. Pretty excited. Uh, goddamn excited. So stay tuned. Call Nicole, I'm like, man, this works out. This is like some legit bucket list. Shit. Oh, it's man. Fun. I'm yep. so excited. So excited. Yeah. Enjoy this. We'll be back in a minute. Love you, kids. Bye bye. Break!
is your one-stop shop for limited edition t-shirts featuring all the crap that you already like anyway. Every day you're going to see three new limited edition designs available only for 24 hours. That's just a single day. After that, they're gone forever. And uh, best yet, if you want to check them out, buy a little something, something they're going to throw a little kickback to us, your folks, your friends here at the podcast. So go to panelsonpage.com, click that banner at the top of the page, or on the sidebar at pcn.panelsonpage.com, or you can just update your bookmark, check it on your phone every single morning. That's what I do. Uh, ripped, that's R-I-P-T dot panelsonpage.com. T-shirts start at just 10 bucks, and they'll kick us a little something every time. Help us keep the lights on. Help us keep the podcast going. Help us keep the side, side up and get you a pretty cool T-shirt, man. Cool swag, cool shirts, good people, good deals from your favorite podcast. So check it out. Ripped.panelsonpages.com. 24-hour limited edition T-shirts that are pretty damn awesome. Check it out. And uh, now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. So let me uh, let me drop a little bit of a, a hypothetical story on you that may or may not have happened in the past couple of weeks while we've been off. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, hypothetically, someone I know might have uh, had a job offer, and uh, contingent on that job offer was a drug test. And uh, just okay. just to be safe, this hypothetical friend that I might know uh, ordered uh, some. Uh, Drug tests on Amazon, as well as some uh, piss cleanser. You know the, the 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 shit that you buy out of High Times magazine. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, so this friend of mine had been drinking a lot of water, some water with lemon to help clear things out, and some B twelve and whatnot, just to make sure that there was no problems. That you know you didn't go into uh, Thinking that you're going to get this new job, you quit the other job, and then you end up with zero jobs because your piss is dirty. Right. Don't want so, that. That's so a terrible hypothetical. This, this hypothetical friend of mine uh, uh, takes one of these uh, piss tests, uh, passes it, Look, everything looks good. Uh, I, just for shits and giggles, pissed on one myself, <laughs> and I would not have passed. <laughs> <laughs> so we know these things work. <laughs> I just, uh, oh, I'm hot. I'm hot. Yeah, I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I I had been uh hypothetically may have been hanging out with my other friend in New York for a couple weeks this year, uh, who might hypothetically have his new vape pen uh that hypothetically another friend of ours got from Colorado. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, w I wasn't I wasn't passing hypothetically no P test anytime soon. No, no, not no, in this climate. Not no, no, not not in this climate whatsoever. Oh, that's fucking great. But it's that's so great. So um, but it ended up my friend hypothetically didn't end up needing to take a piss test. So, <laughs> so uh, everyone hypothetically wins. Hypothetically, we might have two twenty dollar bottles of uh, piss cleanser. That have gone unused. Uh, if anybody's interested, I, I wonder if Amazon. Seriously, think those back. only. Podcast yeah. at PelzonPages dot com. <laughs> so uh, no weird shit. You want to talk some news? Yeah, let's do the news. We got a few stories over the past couple weeks. We'll do it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is some stuff we're talking about. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fuck it. In five, four, three. <laughs> This is the Pop Top 5 Pack of News for <laughs> December 5th, 2017. Fucking thing. Yeah, surprisingly, sucks. even though we've been off a week, uh, not a whole lot of stories, but the stories we do have, a couple of them are nice and juicy. Uh, first of all, let's talk about C.B. Sabolski. Oh. oh. Uh, just before the break. <laughs> Uh, we didn't do news the week, excuse me, the week before Thanksgiving because we talked Justice League, but uh, right. CB had been named the new editor in chief of Marvel Comics, and uh, lauded by most as a pretty uh good news, dude. Like fucking, we met CB a couple times when we were yeah. in China, and like he would recognize us as the only other Guaylos 
in the country, and we were fucking, <laughs> we were kind of fucking bros with CP. CP introduced us to like the the head of something at Disney who, or at, at like China Disney when we were in Shanghai the last time. It was fucking hilarious. Uh, sweet guy. Um, yeah, really good at bolstering. Like his job for many years has been to sort of, uh, I mean, like talent scout is kind of. Uh, underselling it but it's out of that i mean that's essentially what he's doing and recently he's been uh expanding marvel's reach in asia so that's why he was he he was living in china at the time for a while he's been living over there uh, yeah the dude uh apparently super loves asia uh and that's where maybe a little too much (laughs) (laughs) that's where the story takes a turn Apparently, C.B. Sobolski, while he was still working as, what was his title at the time? I believe he might have been a a talent relations guy or a talent scout or whatever. Editor of some... Something. Kind. Uh, At the time, he had a pen name of Akira Yoshida that he was using to write, (laughs) quote-unquote, Japanese comics uh, for... Oh, boy. um, Let's see. I just saw it here. I know he did Wolverine Soul Taker. Um, he did, I think, some Marvel manga verse books. Yes. He did that yes. for Son of Asgard book. Yes. Yes. Oh, it was Dreamwave. He was working for Dreamwave under the alias Akira Yoshida. Oh, when, okay. When a Marvel editor came to Akira Yoshida offering him work. <laughs> and Akira Yoshida was like, Ah, so, uh, thank you very much, honorable Marvel editor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so spot on. So, while CB was working for Marvel as whatever his fucking shit was, he was also writing for Marvel as Akira Yoshida. Which... Now here's the thing. Mike, that is strange. Right? Like, it's not... It's not the best look. You know? Well, I guess at the time, you couldn't... Marvel wasn't do, having people do both, I guess I, sh- I should say. Like, they... Ed, they wouldn't let editors write comics right, as well. Right, right. That was the, the first problem that popped up with this. One of the problems yep. that popped up with this. You're, well, you're not supposed yeah. to double dip, essentially. Well, like, you know, it, it, it's weird, uh, and it's kind of, you know, dishonest. Yeah. You know? I, I this, this story, there's a bunch of points in it where you're like, that's not that bad. And then it takes a turn, and you're like, oh, wait, that's bad. Uh, when, it when, takes a turn when he... Took interviews. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as Akira Yoshida and like wrote this whole backstory. Backstory yeah. about his fucking life. Like, and that's when it gets super fucking weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> super <laughs> fucking weird. Uh, and the, the funny My favorite part is not that, only does um, that, but has a guy come in. Well, well, okay. That the there's a few ways you can interpret that story because uh, there there's the story that there was an Asian man in the Marvel offices that people were saying was Akira Yoshida, and but he was just some Chinese interpreter that I think people assumed was Akira Yoshida. I don't in these stories that I've read, I don't feel like CB ever said yes, this is Akira. But, Here's my friend Akira. But in interviews as CB has said, oh, yeah, I've met Akira. <laughs> Ooh, he's, yeah, a fucking, see, he's a fucking sweet dude. Well, that was like there was the um, over at when CBR used to be good. They had the comic book legends, uh, urban legends thing. Right. And yeah. this, this actually came up like was Akira Yoshida actually a person or was it a pen name and how they said yeah he was a real person was they talked to mike martz who worked at marvel at the time and he's like yeah i met him he's a great dude we had lunch together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh my 
my god. It's so fucked up. Like, it's not, it's not fucked up. It's fucking weird and kind of hilarious. But it's not, he didn't sexually harass anyone as Akira Yoshida, so there's that. But it is a little bit racist. Because, uh, well, part of the thing was, the books that he was writing for Marvel, he was writing a lot of, like, Japanese stories like about right. ninjas, they hired him because they were looking for an authentic right. Japanese voice right. that could write for an American audience. Yes, yes. But then you got this tubby white dude, and anything that he writes as a Japanese guy just automatically seems racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm only that one to uh, blow the whistle of cultural appropriation. I think that is a bullshit term. But boy, did he appropriate the fuck out of some culture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, not to mention likely taking the job of an actual Japanese person. An actual right. Japanese yeah. person. Yeah. And That's super fucking weird. You know, with his career as like talent scout, possibly shutting down other Japanese talent in favor of Akira Yoshida. Right. Well I don't think he was a talent scout at the time. But edit but some other editor be like, oh man, like Akira's turn is a good work. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, really interesting and he's he's come out like over the years he's denied it but right now when the story broke again he came out and admitted it to completely and apparently got his ass chewed out by marvel and so far oh really the i didn't think about any kind of real backlash it, so far the story has seemed to kind of died a little bit in the past because well, I guess Marvel knew when they promoted it. Right, like right. he had told them prior. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah, like so... they they weren't gonna unpromote him because of this. Yes, yes. So he admitted it publicly after his uh promotion, but he admitted it to Marvel prior. And that's when they chewed okay, him out. Sure. But they and they still promoted him. Yeah. And as it seems because right like now, said, it's not like it's it's not criminal. No. You know, it's just this is weird. It's not. It's certainly not a good look for your brand no. new editor in chief. <laughs> yeah, no. it's not a great way to start your tenure. That's for damn sure. But it looks like but, uh, as of I right found now, out about it um, on Twitter uh, from Sean Baby. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean Baby. Um, he does some. He writes for Crack. He's, he's got a good blog. Like he's fucking really funny. And I first heard about it because uh, his, his tweet said. So, a white Marvel writer was a fake Japanese writer named Akira Yoshida. That's the name of the most popular anime in the world <laughs> with the last name of the Japanese X-Man. It's like naming yourself Cheeseburger Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I love like, that tweet so much. While on the subject, please call me Cheeseburger Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, I want to eat a Cheeseburger Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, yes, you do. It seemed for a while, like last week, that more and more stories kept coming out about Akira Yoshida and CB and it seemed like the whole story wasn't going to die and that Marvel might have to do something but as of today as of the past few days it seems to have died down so I, I see CB sticking around for the time being but it was kind yeah, of it's like, I mean, like what are they going to like is that I don't know that seems like kind of a you, you gotta is that worth a man losing his job he, over I don't know, it's it's you know it's not scrupulous it's weird you got to you know, consider happened this week. You also have to consider the climate. Even though it's not sexual harassment or anything, it, it's it's certainly not a good look and it's he was taking the jobs of other possible Asian people at the at the time. Yeah, it's not great. It's, it's, not, not, it's not good. It's not, it's not good. So, uh he better keep his fucking nose clean for the oh time being. Oh my god. Being. Yeah. No, if he has even a single pair of those vending machine panties. You better put them just way, way away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Bad news. There was one. Uh, I think it was today or maybe yesterday. There was a story about CB that came out, and it was him in one of his, you know, classic CB camp shirts. Oh, it was a CBR story from yesterday. That yes, the CB the the Sabolsky Yoshida news is problematic. Here's why. And the picture is him in one of his camp shirts with the uh, design on it, sitting in front of some Marvel art. And I was just like, 
man, I wish he was wearing one of those rayon anime shirts in this picture <laughs> <laughs> with fucking Goku on the bottom. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Maybe we could Photoshop that. Well, those three Dragon Ball Z Club shirts. Yeah, exactly. Ah. With some flames on it. I think I have one of those in the closet still. Oh, I bet you do. I hope you do. <laughs> yeah. I'll throw uh, shit away. I'm sure it's still down there. Uh, let's uh, move on to some uh, super positive uh, happy news. The Avengers Infinity War trailer. Oh! You guys. Yeah. Kelly? I didn't know if I should believe you at first when you said <laughs> happy news. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where this is going. Either way. Uh, yeah, so the Infinity War trailer uh, dropped last... <laughs> Oh, God, I fucking forget. Last Wednesday, maybe? Yeah, it was last Wednesday yeah. morning. Yeah, so, like, it was... Yeah. It, even if I'll we say did... here what I said in our Facebook group. Like, you know, I walked out of Justice League being like, you know what? That wasn't terrible. Call it a win. And then I got actual, honestly, got goosebumps three times watching a fucking trailer for just for Infinity War. Wow, that's, what a different experience! Uh, <laughs> like, going back real quick, Juggalo John in the chat says he has a Vegeta one of one of those Rayon anime shirts. Goddamn right! I think I have probably the same one. Right. Uh, before we get to talking about the trailer, I just want to talk about uh, the, some of the marketing that Marvel does that is just great. Do you guys see the video of? Uh, Tom Holland unboxing the poster. No. It was the day before the trailer came out, and he did a live unboxing. He's like, oh, I, apparently Mark Ruffalo sent me something cool, so I'm going to unbox it here live. And he opens it up, and it's the Avengers Infinity poster, which hadn't been officially released yet. And he's looking at it, oh, that's fucking cool. And then he lifts up this other uh, piece of paper, and it says, do not show on the internet. This is exclusive, or some ah. shit like that. Oh, that's funny. I was like, I love these guys. These guys are so great at what they do. <laughs> that's so good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Infinity War. Uh, I agree with the goosebumps, and and that's that's all you really want in life, really. Honestly, to be fair, uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of bagging on Thanos. But I think he looks fucking amazing, and he's got... He looks great. So I don't like him without his hat. I want him to have his hat. Yeah, but he'll have his hat in the second one, I'm sure. Well, he's already, we've already seen him with his hat. Yeah, he's, yeah, I know, but why isn't he wearing it here? He's, he's got fucking here to party. Yeah. <laughs> why can't he party in his hat? <laughs> that's, that's, his, that's his business hat. He's got so much he's fucking... fucking to go fucking up shit. <laughs> so much personality in the CGI, and you just kind of yeah. think back to it Steppenwolf. Not the shit in his mouth, but it's everything steppenwolf is Yeah. Steppenwolf didn't look terrible, but he looked like a video game villain. He looked pretty terrible. Thanos looks like Josh Brolin worked out for three years and dyed his skin purple. <laughs> just rubbed grape jelly on himself every <laughs> night before he went to bed. <laughs> just to get in character. He just... Ate human oh. growth hormone every meal of the day <laughs> and became... It just shows so much, man. There's so much. I like uh, Scruffy Cap and, like, you know, basically a fucked up, broken version of his old outfit from Civil War. Yep. You know, apparently he's been chilling in Wakanda at least part of the time since we last saw It's so fucking great. Uh, you got uh, Bruce Banner falling through the ceiling of the Sanctum Santorum. Kind of like uh, Silver Surfer did in the books. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, what's so funny is we've been waiting for this movie for 11 years. Yeah. Well, well, let, let me take that back. Uh, since Avengers, so f so five years, we've been waiting for Infinity War. And while it looks amazing, and I'm super stoked for it, like it doesn't look... The way I expected it to, and that's a like a welcome surprise. Like, it doesn't look anything like the movie I expect. How do you mean? Like, I d didn't expect a huge Wakandan war battle. Oh, no, okay, no, that's fair to say. <laughs> like, and just some of the where the characters are, uh, some of the relationships, the just the tone of it. 
Yeah, like who who thought when Avengers came out that you know you would get to see like one of the big emotional character beats for Avengers three was going to be when Banner sees Black Widow again. <laughs> <laughs> but they've earned it. They've earned that. They've earned me giving a shit about that. The scene where one of the the what is it? The Black Order is Thanos's army. Yeah. Or, okay. Where they're taking the the gem out of Vision's forehead. Oh man, yeah, that was cool. And then. Uh, Hulk Buster. That was a scene that Mahoney called like yeah. a few years back. Yeah, well, he called that Thanos would rip it out of Vision's head, but same difference. Like that's 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 a scene that we've been envisioning. Like that is something that I envision. The rest of it, like I just wasn't ready for it, and I'm stoked. The Hulkbuster's back. Rumor is that that's Banner in the Hulkbuster armor. That'd be dope. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe. Hey, let, let, let's, let's watch the Infinity War trailer. Let, uh, let's watch it. Let's, let's, okay. Let's watch it. Okay. Uh, I've got the link right here. <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> uh, let me link you in the podcast chat right now. I will also link the chat chat. And we will go on your mark, boss. Thank God, I need to get it. Okay. No worries. Just say we're ready. Yeah, it looks like they're having a Trump impeachment vote on. What? Tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure it's going to go great. I doubt it. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be exactly what needs to have happen. I'm, I'm sure. You got it, Kelly? It's loading. All right. I okay. do love all the go. garbage clickbait articles about how, like, you know, everyone's talking about how, oh, Viking says Avengers 4 is going to be the end. It's like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we <laughs> know. <that>. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, yeah, you mean you mean they may want to uh, make some big status quo changes unless the people do some other shit after twenty two yeah. movies? Yeah, the Avengers team might not be the same after Avengers: Infinity War. Also, uh, it's like I hope not. Also, yeah, right. Uh, Marvel Studios plans twenty more movies after this. I'm like, oh yeah, you think so? <laughs> you, you say, yeah, <laughs> they could crank out twenty movies in a decade. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Yeah, I'm good to go. All right. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. There was an idea. I like this voiceover. To bring together. Like, I hope it's not actually in the movie, people. just for the trailer. That's really great. To see if we could become something more. Well, yeah, it's the speech from the first Avengers. So when they yeah, us, but like not with like Thor didn't say it though. Right. Could fight the battles. It's dope though. Yeah. That they never Banner could. with the Hulkbuster arm. Blonde Black Widow bothers me. It, I think it's her eyebrows. She looks like she doesn't have eyebrows because they dyed her eyebrows blonde. Yeah, it's just like that's not that same character. Blonde Black Widow is a different person. Yeah, and she's an asshole. Yeah, but she's also a spy. So, well, ah, there's that. You'll know what it's like to lose. Oh, he is sounds Tony great. wearing a oh, Captain America hoodie in that right. shot? No, it's, it's like a fucking Iron Man sense. suit hoodie. Spider Sense. Oh, cool. Yeah, Spider Sense. Pretty great. Dreaded. What is an Iron Man hoodie? There it is. Okay. It. Still oh, alive. Loki, you done fucked up. Loki gonna die, you guys. Yep. Oh, he looks so good. He looks yeah, he really does look fucking straighter. <laughs> like that's the Spider Man costume that Tony wanted to give him at the end of Homecoming, and that's cool. Get this man a shield. Get this man a shield. Oh, oh, there's the gooses again, you guys. I got the gooses again. <laughs> like, I'm surprised I give so much of a shit about seeing Doctor Strange again. Like, we, like, it's such a good time with him and Thor. Oh. Oh, he just bitch slaps Iron Man so hard right there. Oh, God. <laughs> He just crumples like the, the ultimate UFC KO. Look at that. And remember back in the day when we used to complain that there wasn't like a 
a recognizable Marvel Studios theme music. Right? That's the one. Yeah. Who the hell are you guys? Oh, man. There's, there's the goosebumps. There they are. Oh. <laughs> May 4th, 2018. Hashtag Orlando 2018. <laughs> Oh, real quick, while we're on this, before we move on, just uh, kind of the same token. Let's see if I can find this. Okay, all right. So, I, I generally don't click on, I don't do clickbait, because I'm not a fucking idiot, right? Yeah. <laughs> I saw this article that came up in my uh, uh, Google feed yesterday, maybe it was today, and it says, you know, the headline was a Screen Rant article. Hate Screen and it's Rant. 15 MCU Easter eggs that didn't go anywhere. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. Well, I mean, they're, e- it. they're Easter eggs, though, so. Right. So where's the Easter egg? Okay, that's part of it. Okay, like, where's an Easter egg supposed to go with an Easter egg? Okay. Yeah. Like, all right, so fuck it. I'll buy it. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Let's see what happens. You're going to take down every single one of these 15, aren't you? <laughs> 15 was the Infinity Gauntlet in Odin's Vault, which, one, yes, that was an Easter egg. Two, it fucking went somewhere. Yeah. Yep. They called it back in the last movie, and this article was published yesterday. Yeah. In fact, the, the last thing it says here is, the humorous tone in Thor Ragnarok allowed Marvel to address this issue. They finally got all that blah, 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 blah. So, like, you know, they talk about what Hela did. That is the definition of going somewhere. And yep. also, so like, that's- they say that it didn't go anywhere, but that Infinity Gauntlet, sure, that uh, technically it wasn't the real Infinity Gauntlet, and it didn't quote unquote go anywhere but it's not like there's not a the real infinity gauntlet and we're getting an infinity war movie and the past like three four years of marvel movies have all been based around infinity gems right so that's fucking ridiculous yeah uh and then the next one was howard the duck Uh, the guardians of the galaxy and you know what he was in guardians part two for a minute he was a cameo yeah so what, did they want, like, a full-on movie? Apparently. Uh, this one was one of my favorites. Uh, number 13 was the Prowler slash Miles Morales connection in Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, <laughs> this movie came out four months ago. <laughs> like, what, what did they the want? Like, it, like, that just happened. That just happened. Uh, this one I did not, I actually did not know about. Uh, apparently, there is, a like, a shot in Iron Man um, where you see, like... Um, an Audie Gronoff painting a Fin Fang Foom in the background of like a movie or something. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but again, that's not supposed to go anywhere. That's just an Easter egg. Uh, the next one was uh, Beta Ray Bill, Ares, and Bi Beast on Sakar. They're on the Grandmaster's little tower. Right. Which? Okay. Like again, like what's what's supposed to happen there? That's just an Easter egg. And yeah. and um, I think they were supposed to be in the movie. But they cut them, you know, just for, for time to, a lot of movies. to be able to it's use a lot them of later. Movies. Yeah, I get it. Uh, then they got uh, Jocasta in Age of Ultron because one of the discs uh, that uh, Tony puts in after Jarvis gets compromised says Jocasta on it. Right. Um, also, I watched Age of Ultron not long ago. One of those discs also says Tadashi, which is kind of great. <laughs> yes. Big Hero I never saw 6 that until the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Number nine was Namor from Iron Man 2. Because if you remember the bit where Stark's in front of the little screen that's got the map and it shows, shows like Wakanda's on it, there's a dot in the middle of the ocean that could very well have been Atlantis. Right. I'll almost give him that one. Right. Uh, number eight, the original Human Torch in Captain America, Captain America. Which. Oh, yeah. That's one of those where it's like, what the fuck are you supposed to do with that? That's just an Easter egg. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and then talk about extremists and man thing um, about how a lot of the plot of Iron Man 3 had to do with extremists um, they mentioned man thing and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and how like Ellen Brandt is in one of the test subjects in extremists but like I guess since they didn't actually put man thing in which okay maybe I'll give them that one uh, whatever and then Project Pegasus which they blew it up at the beginning of the Avengers not really much you can do about that uh, number five is advanced idea mechanics. Aim, like, no, fuckhead. 
they're basically the villain of Iron Man three. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, they do the leader, which again I'll give you that one. That that didn't go anywhere when. Well, that's Karen not even an Easter. That's not even uh, an Incredible. Easter egg. That's they never got to follow that thread. You know. Yeah, that's just like yeah, a dropped movie franchise right. at yeah. that point. Again, not really an Easter egg, but you know whatever. And then uh, number three, damage control, which. See the aforementioned Spider-Man Homecoming, you stupid bricks. <laughs> yeah, and again, not yeah. an Easter egg. Like, they m- moved the plot forward. Yeah, yeah, that was a big part of it. I guess, the, and, but, but here's the thing, too. The, the, the frame of this damage control part isn't even about it being an Easter egg. It says, uh, in 2015, Disney-owned network ABC ordered a pilot for damage control comedy series. that would be centered around the construction company, blah, 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 blah. So it talks about how they were going to do that show, and then they didn't. That's, That's not, not an Easter, Easter egg. egg. <laughs> it's not what that is at all. And in fact, damage control became a driving factor in the plot of Spider-Man: Homecoming. So you're fucking dumb. Uh, and then number two was Doctor Nicodemus West. He was the villain in Doctor Strange: The Oath, if you'll recall that. What the hell's uh, that? Oh, you never read Doctor Strange: The Oath? It was Brian Vaughn and Marcus oh, Martin that Strange. okay. I thought that was like a movie thing. No, 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 no. Okay. But uh, he was. Um, they like mention. Uh, Dr. Nicodemus West into the Doctor Strange movie. He's like the doctor that operates on Steven's hands. But again, that's that's what's he supposed to be the fucking villain? No, that's just, just an Easter egg. You dumbasses. <laughs> and the number one uh, Easter egg in the MCU that didn't go anywhere is the scrolls. Come on, guys. What where was there an Easter egg for the scrolls? Yeah. It says the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spent an enormous amount of time in energy teasing what many fans assumed would be the inclusion of the alien race, the scrolls, and the MCU. The show constantly came back to the phrase Embrace the Change, which is clearly a reference to the scrolls, and even featured the scroll alphabet in various writing the formulas. As uh, the series went on, it seemed like the plans changed and the scrolls were never actually introduced to the MCU in the way most expected. Uh, all that took place was basically the Norton season two, blah, 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 and humans were, okay, whatever. I don't actually remember any of that happening. And also, we know the scrolls are the villain in the Captain Marvel movie. You also, fucking asshole. Also, fuck Agents of Shield. <laughs> yeah, fuck Agents of Shield to death. Like, which uh, last thing that we can move on. Uh, boy, the Agents of Shield premiere was last week, and it was tough. They they burned a lot of the goodwill they bought with Ghost Rider. Let me tell you, because they managed to jump two sharks in the season premiere they're in space <laughs> and in the future <laughs> oh all right but like how so, far in the future like hundreds of years uh so far in the future that the earth is gone oh so what <laughs> they're, in a, they're in a Cree space station uh hovering around where earth used to be there's like a small chunk of the planet left and like all the people like live under subjugation of the Cree. And every once in a while, the Kree decide they have to kill some people. Like, it's super boring. And there are no stakes. <laughs> because it's already a terrible future and the Earth is gone. It's really stupid. That's so, such yeah. a shame. Yeah, they got... I mean, I'll give it an episode or two because I've watched the show for a while. But So they're not, skipping... even, they're not even going to build off of Inhumans at all. They're just letting that lie. Well, because they, they spent so much so much time fucking with the Inhumans for the past couple of years that, but if you mean like those Inhumans characters, no, <laughs> definitely not. Unless they're not in the future of the entire season and come back and I don't know. For all I know, every one of the Inhumans show died in the last <laughs> episode. I have no idea because I ne- I don't know. Like they could have all. That show could have ended in a lockjaw bukkake scene. I never would have known about. It. Like, if you no tell what the fuck happened to that if show. You Wait, is lockjaw real. doing the bukkake or is he being bukkake? That's up to you. I don't know. Oh, oh God, be... I don't know what's mo- what's more or less upsetting. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, I think I'd rather see him do the bukkake. Yes, agreed, yeah, so, agreed. Because I feel yeah, like so... getting bukkake on that's abuse. And a giant bulldog bukkakeing on someone else or many people, that's kind of funny. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're no, we'll spraying... Next. We'll, next. Well, uh, 
If anyone listening has watched the finale of Inhumans, please write in or voicemail and let us know what happened. Yeah, if, yeah. Who lives? Who dies? Even if you like, haven't seen it, yes. let us know <laughs> what you think happened. Give us your yeah. best approximation of what happened in the Inhumans finale. Yeah, we're not going to fact check you. <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, next story, this could go... It could be confirmed, it could not be, so let's not get our tits in a twist yet, but uh, remember the deal where Disney was going to buy Fox a few weeks ago that immediately um, died? Well, it, it could possibly happen again, they could announce it next week, but the knowing these things, it could die again, but it, it's it's back in the news. You know what, I just, I don't think I care. Like, aside from, like, because at this point... Pulling in the X Men because that's what everybody's talking about. Oh man, the X Men could be in the MCU. At this point, it doesn't even work. No, I, and I, it's like I don't care that much to want to see media consolidated like that. Yeah, there's that part of it too. Like you know, less choice, less options, more you know, corporate dickbaggery. I'm less about that's... the X Men and more about the Fantastic Four and and their universe being yeah. pulled in. That that there's still definitely an opportunity for that to make sense. And with Time time travel and reality jumping, you could still make X Men happen. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. Like, shy of like you know, a whole ripping up and like you know them coming from another universe. Right. That's the only way it makes sense because you know they've already established. Fuck, man, what? What's that? It's almost ten years of movies and like you know all the history. Like, there ain't no goddamn mutants in that world. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's supposed to the the current MCU takes place in present day essentially, and the X Men right, right. movies are supposed to take place in the not so distant future. So, well, and also the seventies and the eighties <laughs> at the same time. Yes, yes, that too. <laughs> that too. So, if if you're not using the Fox X Men continuity, mutants could exist. Oh, you're definitely not using the X-Men Fox continuity. <laughs> no. Fox isn't using the X-Men Fox continuity. Speaking of, well, since since this story may or may not actually happen, let's let's move on to uh, speaking of X-Men continuity. Uh, James Franco. Oh, this story has the link no longer works, so let's just let's just bullshit this one. Uh, the headline was that James Franco is apparently working on a hard R multiple man movie for Fox. I am 1000% on board with this. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure which direction you were going to go. My first reaction was who wants a fucking, who cares about multiple man to give him his own movie? Second of all, why would it be hard R? And then third, wait a second. No one cares about multiple man. So go ahead and let James Franco make a fucking hard R multiple man movie where yeah, he, yeah. where he's just got ninety clone ninety James Franco clones. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, and he's yeah, best friends that. and he's best yeah. friends with fuck Seth Rogen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, oh. if, they, if it's anything like that, uh, that Madrox miniseries they did uh, that uh, Peter David wrote a while back, I am all about that. The James? idea was that cause that that's go. Cool. You know. Oh, you mean the tax evader, gypsy hater? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, but so um, no, Madrox wasn't a tax evading gypsy hater in that story. <laughs> Just to clarify, no. Was this written by Peter? I David? really want there to be the day when we look back on Peter David's things and we realize, like, oh god, this is all about how much he hates the gypsies. <laughs> like, Richter never once paid his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But that story was so it, essentially when Madrox creates a dupe, you know, he does not control that dupe. Like that, 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 you know, multiple has like, you know, all of his life experience up to that point and free will. But then it can fuck off and do whatever. And, you know, when he touches it, he reabsorbs it, gets all of his memory back or whatever. So, you know, and what happens? Like, so that story is about what happens when one of the dupes leaves. And goes and becomes a murderer wearing your face. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's a fucking awesome idea for a movie. Yep. Seth Rogen as strong guy. 
Fuck yeah. Look <laughs> the strong guy. Oh my god. I watched a video. It was an interview with uh, James and Dave Franco, and then Tommy Wiseau and the guy that James Franco plays in The Disaster Artist. And they're all on a couch, and they're all being interviewed together. And James Franco is talking at Tommy Wiseau in his James Franco, Tommy Wiseau voice. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And, like, Tommy Wiseau, like, doesn't think anything of it, but it seems so mocking. It, I, it was hard to watch. I love James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a fucking, he's a weird dude. Oh, I, my I, I'm God. All, I'm all bored with this. Oh, my God. If we do another podcast intro anytime soon, I want Lee's sound clip to be, I love James Franco. <laughs> I fucking do love James Franco. Put that shit in the intro. I don't give a fuck. Oh, my gosh. Mark it, my honey. I don't give a damn. And then, final story. Uh, last time we did actual news, uh, it was all about sexual harassment and all the fucking scumbags in the world that uh, are grabbing people's asses and talking shit and whatever. And, uh, dude... Uh, Andrew Kreisberg has been fired from uh, working on the WBCW uh, DC shows. El See you later, man. Yep. He could have. Not good. Not great. You, you, you know, know, maybe I mean, good that he's gone. Yeah, fuck that. Maybe, maybe not do so much sexual harassment, and maybe instead pretend to be uh, a uh, Japanese show runner, and <laughs> things would have worked out for you. Oh God! Yeah, that's. Yeah, whatever, man. Sorry, fella. Hate it for you. So bad, so sad. But man, super gross. Yeah. And the hits just keep the hits just keep on coming, man. They just apparently now Dustin Hoffman's coming under some fire. This is everywhere. Oh yeah. It's nuts. So yeah, that's the, that's it. That's the news, yeah. Yeah, Fuck that him. is that is it. Not much to say about it. I mean, whatever. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I still maintain it's like one of those things where it's like you know you hear a story about a guy like oh once in 1981 he grabbed the butt I'm like oh, great not a good move but you know I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago you know what I'm saying like, that, I get that sure you no know, so I, I don't believe we should be defined by like a mistake that's not fair but if you were banned from multiple shopping malls and high schools yeah, you know, maybe you can be defined by that. <laughs> maybe you can be defined by that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. At some point, it becomes uh, not an isolated incident. Maybe you shouldn't be, I don't know, like running for like, you know public office or something, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing: if this motherfucker can't make Supergirl TV shows, maybe that guy shouldn't be allowed to be the senator of yeah. Alabama. <laughs> uh, with that story, and I've been seeing a lot of you know stories about the crisis on Infinite Earth X or whatever it's called. And I've been seeing a lot of pictures of like, is it like Red Sun Supergirl or whatever? It's like kind uh, of Nazi, I, I was kind of part of it. Oh, Nazi! It was Supergirl. tremendous. Like I watched all four parts and loved it. She, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to watch the rest of it. I haven't got around to it yet. What I saw of it was wonderful. She looks awesome as Nazi Supergirl. She looks super sexy, uh, you know. But I'm not saying that in a harassment type of way. I think it just looks great to the point where. Uh, I was like, oh, man, Melissa Benoist, she's pretty great. And I was like, oh, yeah, remember that picture of her uh, banging that dude? And she fucking did the reach around and grabbed his balls. Like, she's she's top ten all time. <laughs> like, like that, that's like that's like a super that's that's a super girl sex move right there. The behind the okay. back grabbing the balls. Earn the cape, earn the stripes, huh? Yeah, I got it. God bless you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to finishing that up, and that even in the uh, yeah, there's they have their big uh, in the first chapter they got their big uh, church fight scene, and it's it's got everyone has their moment. It's it's great. It's it's it does all the shit that you kind of wish Justice League would have done. Yeah, <laughs> uh, on TV for a TV budget, and everything looked great. Yeah, it, it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed that whole crossover. Good stuff. Let's well, talk about comic books. Get the fuck out of here. Sure the problem with comic books is the ink comes off on your hands. Every time you turn the page, you have to wash your hands. I saw a lot yeah. of news stories about Doomsday Clock, but I didn't pull any of them because have we talked about Doomsday Clock yet? 
No, because okay. I was the last time we did a show. That's when I left to go do right. the midnight yeah, release. Right. So, so I figured we'd get to it in comic talk at some. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Um. So yeah. It man, Jim take like if they, if they have to do this right. If, if they've got to do their fucking Watchmen thing right. If they just got all the right asses have the right hairs up them, they're gonna do it. Thank God they got Gary Frank to draw it. Because it looks great. Yeah, it looks awesome. It looks exactly like you want it to look like. It all fits. It all it all works in that world or whatever. Um, you know what? I mean, I didn't... Uh, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, it's... It's, it's totally unnecessary. But <laughs> I didn't dislike it. I think it's fine. Yeah. It is. It's, it's Watchmen 2. It seems very much like Watchmen 2, yeah. Um, but, like... When the fuck did the Kents die in a car accident? That's new, I think. That's new? That's gotta be new. Okay, okay, all right. I, so, I was this, not aware of that. But like, then this is not, like, the Rebirth Superman or anything like that. So, like, this is kind of a, a, another DC Universe, then. No, I think they're, I think it's just a Jeff Johns retcon. Okay. Did you ever read his Secret Origin? Because I wonder if that's like if they die like that in there, and he's just bringing it. Yeah, I did read that. I actually kind of liked it. It's uh, and I think what that's the one Lionel you wrote, right, Drew? Yeah, no, it was the Gary. That was another uh, Jeff Johns Gary Frank book. Oh no, I have read that one then. No. Okay, because yeah, I'm now I'm wondering. I haven't read that either, but I'm wondering if that's where like they die in a car crash there, and he's just bringing it in. I don't know. Weird, but yeah, um. It's crazy. It's, I mean, what the the bulk of the story takes place what, in Watchmen in, World. <laughs> in, in Watchmen World, yeah, but in 1992. So it's been like several years since the pussy face squid monster wrecked New York, and like at some point, uh, Ozzy Mandy got exposed, and everyone knows that he was behind it all, and shit got real bad. Like all of the, you know nuclear disarmament or like you know all the coming together to face the common threat like all that shit went away uh, and it got real bad and the bulk of the issues about Rorschach uh, bailing out a couple of supervillains to go help find Dr. Manhattan but didn't Rorschach die why well, yes yes he did this is a different guy that's all we know he's a different guy but he's still a lunatic so <laughs> I did the one thing I really enjoyed about the this Rorschach is how he was written as though he was just a Rorschach cosplayer. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Like this like the dumb shit he's writing in his notebook just seems like the dumb shit a Rorschach cosplayer would wander around a con muttering to themselves. Yeah. No, that's that is exactly right. Yeah. Um The uh the mime supervillain guy is kinda terrifying. That shit was awesome. I can't wait until that guy inevitably blows someone's head off with his invisible guns. Um, yes. <laughs> like, that has to happen. Yeah, it 1,000% has to happen. Yeah, I love it. It's great. It, it, was, it was good, though. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I, again, just mostly because of the, the way it looks. It, it Not only does the, the art great, whatever, but it looks like Watchmen. You know, like yeah. the very famous nine-panel grill. Like, it looks like fucking Watchmen. Uh, and I wonder if every issue is going to look like Watchmen or as the story moves them to the DCU, if you're going to get more traditional layouts. It'd be very interesting to see what happens. I think that's how it'll go, because like, as we saw in the uh, last four pages when it turns to a more Superman thing, it stops looking like Watchmen. But it's still that same grid, though. Was it? Oh, yeah, very much so. Okay, then I think, yeah, it, if that's the case, then it probably will stay like that. Oh, we'll see. But it's not bad. Like, uh, you know, never would have said I wanted it, but it's not bad. It's, it's, no. It's good, I dig it. Um, so, what else? Yeah, oh, I cried reading a Batman comic last week. Oh, that, that issue was amazing. Batman Annual number two. Holy shit. Uh, it just goes through um, the entire you know, courtship of Batman and Catwoman. Uh, some some A plus uh, retconning in here. I think is really well done. Really like yeah. Just you know stories of Catwoman 
you know, stealing the Batmobile and you know, breaking into Wayne Manor like several times, just, just you know, kind of just this you know superhuman flirting that they're doing, kind of getting to know one another and all this stuff, and you know, you have all this courtship business, and then it cuts to them, you know, as an old married couple, like doing old married couple things, and then fucking. Bruce gets cancer and dies, and it's just fucking devastating. <laughs> like it's it's so 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 good, so good. I like the notion of the of their of their daughter becoming Batwoman at some point in the future is so great. And didn't they call the daughter Helena too? Yeah, yeah. Good. And they did a callback to, um, the. Catwoman story they did like, last year where they're arguing over when they actually first met. I think it's really great. Yeah, really great. I, I love that that's been a callback. It's it's fucking wonderful. It's really, really good. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Killer Be Killed 14. That's still a great book. Yep. Uh, and they finally, in this issue, they finally got us back to where we started. Uh, <laughs> it definitely took a while, but he even acknowledged that it took a while, the, the narrator. So, um, it's good. He, you know, he, he he killed like five dudes in a Russian brothel and sets in place like a legit really good plan to kill this Russian mob boss. And it fucking works. Like, it totally works. And, you know, by all accounts, he's going to get away with it. And, you know, then he sees the demon again, and that's not good. It's going to be bad. I don't know if we talked about it before or not, but I would love to have some prints of his dad's kick-ass, like, Band side artwork that he's got. Yes, like, absolutely. Because like Sean Phillips is one of those guys that can do it all. Like he does this kind of like you know pulpy style, but then these fucking paintings he does though were incredible in this thing. And they come up every once in a while, and I'm like, yeah, give me those. I want those. Really, really good. It's great. Um, and then uh, what else? Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk real quick about uh, Lost Light number eleven. Let's see. But getaway, line piece of shit, uh, and uh, <laughs> all new Wolverine. Are you still re- are you reading the Wolverine book by any chance? No, I never picked that one up. Uh, I, I like Laura a lot. So I was I was always going to read this, um, but this uh, arc has brought back Dokken, which I really appreciate too because I fucking love Dokken. Um, and the story is called Orphans of X. It's basically people who have had their lives wrecked by either. Wolverine or X-23 or Doc and like one of those clawed sons of bitches that run around killing people all the time. These are people who have lost people to them and they've staged this. They've kind of come together and they've staged this massive uh, revenge plot against them. Oh, to that's the they, cool. Yeah, it's it's fucking rad. Like they've even got like a they made a robot to look at Laura's mom. They, they, they made Laura go back to where she was basically created, found her mom in a tube and then when they, you know, Doc and shows up he blows six holes in her. I'm like, yeah, that's not your mom. That's a fucking evil robot. Trust me, it's bad news. And so you got, you know, uh, Laura docking, and then Laura's awesome preteen clone uh, fighting just legions of just, you know, pissed off crazy people with their awesome, uh, these, you know, blank masks with X's on them. It's a very cool idea. And one that is such an obvious idea. I'm shocked no one's done it before. <laughs> They kill a lot of people, <laughs> <laughs> like, kind of with reckless abandon. <laughs> so, I mean, hell, they got uh, the Laura killed an entire town because they made her do it like last year. So, this is a really good story. This is a really good idea. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. What you got, Kelly? Uh, not a whole lot. I d- I shared this on Twitter in the uh, most recent volume of Inuyashiki. There was a special cameo by uh, our current president, and yeah, really timely. <laughs> yeah. So the book, the volume ends pretty much with the announcement that there is an asteroid flying towards Earth, and everyone's going to be dead in a few days. So Trump comes on the TV for a press conference, and he starts going on about how you know here, it's, he's like, you know, I'm going out on top. Things have been pretty great for me. He's like, I don't know about you guys, but then he goes, exact oh, quote, so all bets are off now. Steal, rape, kill, do your worst, you fucking scumbags. As of this moment, murder is legal. <laughs> and it's like, well, 
guess that's how Japan thinks he'd handle a crisis. It's pretty on the nose. <laughs> it's pretty spot on, I think. Yeah. I mean, you didn't see anything out of line that, and just then. That sounds no. uh, remarkably on brand. <laughs> Jesus. So that, that, was, that was a fun read. Uh, I wanted to get Kelly to talk about that Savage Dragon book he sent us screenshots oh of. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> I, you know what? I, 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 I read that. I, I got that book just to kind of see what's going on in there. And that shit does not belong in that book. It's super weird out of nowhere. Yeah, it just kind of happens. Um, there's some very, very sexually explicit things going on in Savage Dragon that came out this past week. Consensual? Um, yeah. Oh, uh, super consensual. There's like a three-page sequence that just gets all sorts of nuts. Uh, let me... I, I took the pictures because I just... I had to save this and send this to these guys. <laughs> let me read the... Uh, the sound effects from the first page. <laughs> uh, the first panel has a good old uh, squit. <laughs> oh, nice. And then the uh, s- the third panel has a good old blap a lorch. <laughs> <laughs> which happens as the savage dragon sprays his wife off of himself with a stream of semen. Across the room. Savage. Across the room. And she lands and snowballs herself. Savage semen. Like, but it pours out. Yeah. Of pouring like, out. And she's this tiny little Asian woman. Yeah. And he thinks she's, like, dead from how she lands. Yeah, because she lands on her neck. Yeah. Yeah. It's the least sexy thing you've ever seen. <laughs> So then he gets a phone call, and she's sucking on the dragon rod while saying, nom, 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 <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Nom, 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 hashtag the good life. <laughs> and then it, it, it ends with him saying to her, listen, you little spunk monkey, I've got to go. <laughs> and while she looks up at him as just the seed it pours out of her mouth, and she's got a face like, Bleh. It's fucked up. It's super fucked up. Yeah, I don't I don't know why he decided kiss. to go in that direction. They kiss but, at uh, one point and Savage Dragon goes, Oh, that was some of mine. Yep. Which implies either like, of course that's some of yours. Like, did you see the load that you blew? <laughs> so what is he implying that he expected it to be be all of her wetness or some other dudes? <sighs> it's unknown. It's so gross. I showed that to my lovely wife. I'm like, look at this weird fucking shit. And she was like, that is super disgusting. I go, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Like, I paused for a second. I said, you know, I feel like someone sucking your dick and saying nom, nom, nom will either be so horribly uncomfortable that you'll never be okay again, or you'll never get hard again unless they do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you learn something about yourself when that happens, <laughs> like one way or the other. <laughs> Super upsetting. I can only get hard if I imagine Bernie Sanders as president. <laughs> That's good fantasy. <laughs> uh, what a world that would be. Jesus Christ. So, uh, my good buddy Goat is he? He's got the fucking magic touch uh, when it comes to like flea markets and yard sales and goodwill and shit like that. He's like like I'll go to like Goodwill just for fuck around and won't find shit. He'll go the very next day and come back with treasures. Like he's he's got the touch. He purchased a, a board game at our local Goodwill the other day called I don't know, I guess what it would be, um how to pronounce it. I guess I guess the, the best I can come up with is Obamopoly. Oh no. Uh and it is I mean Monopoly, obviously, but with a bunch of like batshit crazy right wing bullshit rules. Oh no! Uh, like so, like the, the cover is like very orange and black. It's very Soviet in its uh, look, but with you know Obama and you know man Nancy Pelosi's face like put over like some German whatever. The fu- it's super weird. So we're gonna play that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be any worse than real Monopoly. Is all I'm saying. True. So look forward to report yeah. on that next week. Yeah, that's all. I, that's all. That's all I got. So super weird. 
I think that's the show. Yeah, I think we did it. Yep. It was a good one. Let's do it again. It out. Yeah, we're talking about uh maybe pro- probably we're not going to do a live show on the 26th because it going to be the day after Christmas. Um, I'm going to be traveling that day. Uh, but we're going to have something for you, though. Oh, we will. And I think we decided what we're going to have. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about <laughs> like, it. Like, there's no fucking turning back now, Lee Rodriguez. You put it well, in my mind that we're going to, at some point, record commentary for Home Alone and release that on December 26th. And we're fucking doing it, goddammit. <laughs> I didn't want to commit you to it. Because you have a better idea, that's all. <laughs> no, no. Like, I was thinking gremlins at first but then you said home alone because i want to i like gremlins isn't a bad movie but i like to pick bad movies that we can bag on so i was i was racking my brain for a bad christmas movie but home alone is just so perfect and you were so right that people have seen it so many times that they don't even have to watch it and they can just listen to our commentary anyone can listen and follow along to a home alone commentary i told guys who get guys guess who couldn't Have you never seen Home Alone? Never seen it. <laughs> oh my god! And that makes it even better. That makes it. Oh, that's so good. Like, we should only do movie commentary on movies that Kelly has never seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, amazing. I told my dad we we're gonna do a Home Alone commentary <laughs> because my dad, my old man, his favorite movie genre is Christmas slapstick. <laughs> so home alone christmas vacation Ernest saves christmas home alone 2 i'm sure there's a few others oh scrooged uh he laughs he laughs his fucking ass off i have not seen scrooge in a very long time that'd be a good one too you go one yeah scrooged is great yeah i'm way on board to do the home alone one i even told nicole i'm like hey we're gonna do this you want to do it with us she's like shit maybe the only problem is it's not currently streaming anywhere except for you can get it on am uh, what stars is through amazon but you got to rent it if you don't have amazon so right uh find home alone any way you can and we'll make this happen on uh we'll release it on december 26th like we said yep so you got a little time got a little time pick that up we're gonna we're gonna record it probably one day um the week before something but, yeah you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. it'll be fun Stoked. So, yeah. But before that, we'll be back next week. We're going to do a show. And uh, so, yeah, email us popcast at peltonpages.com. Uh, lose the voicemail 616 951 pop. What the fuck happened in, uh, in humans? Because <laughs> we don't know. We have no idea. <laughs> let, let, let us know. Let us know what happened out there. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk to you guys next week at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central at youtube.com slash panels on pages. Uh, for Jason Eyes and Kelly Harris, I'm the Lord Rare from the Rodriguez. We'll talk to you fucking next week. Night. Love you. Bye bye.
wonderful. Bravo! Oh, I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! 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 boo. 